Hello everyone. As we discussed in the previous session, we are covering one more chapter of Industrial Pharmacy 2, that is Unit 5. In Unit 5, we are covering topics like Industrial Regulatory Requirements, Central Drug Standard Control Organization CDSCO, and State Licensing Authority Organization Responsibility Certificate of Pharmaceutical Product, Regulatory Requirements, and Approval Procedure for the New Drugs. So, आज हम ये सब टॉपिक कवर करने वाले हैं जिसमें आपको CDSCO का डिटेल्स जैसे कि वर्क ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर और रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ये सारी चीजें हम इस पर्टिकुलर सेशन में कवर करने वाले हैं सो लेट्स बिगिन सेंट्रल ड्रग स्टैंडर्ड कंट्रोल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज अ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट अथॉरिटी सेंट्रल अथॉरिटी फॉर रेगुलेटिंग क्वालिटी ड्रग्स मार्केटेड इन द इंडिया अंडर द ड्रग एंड कॉस्मेटिक एक्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी द हेडक्वार्टर ऑफ द सी डी एस सी ओ इज लोकेटेड एट न्यू डेली while it has multiple zonal offices throughout the india the cdsco headed by drug controller general of india cdsco is controlled and governed by directorate general of health services which comes under ministry of health and family welfare government of india cdsco also works in a close contacts with central drug laboratories to perform quality control test to regulate imported drugs as authority The CDSCO works with the Drug Technical Advisory Board and the Drug Consultative Committee while the drug laboratory undertakes testing of such drugs. The central authorities are responsible for approval of new drugs clinical trials in the country laying down the standard for the drugs control over the quality of imported drugs coordination of the activities of state drug control organization and providing expert advice with the view of bringing about the uniformity in enforcement of the drugs and cosmetic act abhi hum dekhenge ki roles and responsibilities kya hai cdsco ke basically cdsco ka jo statutory responsibility aur jo roles hai wo kafi alag hai so let's begin with the statutory functions so the functions are laying down standard of the drugs cosmetic diagnostics and devices laying down regulatory measures amendments to acts and rules to regulate market authorization of new drugs to regulate clinical research in india to approve license to manufacture certain categories of drugs as central license approving authority that is for blood banks large volume parenterals and vaccines and sera to regulate the standard of imported drugs working relating to the drugs technical advisory board and drugs consultative committee a dcc it also comes under the testing of drugs by central drugs labs and it also it's also under, undergoes in the publication of indian pharmacopoeia so let's talk about the other functions the coordinating and the activities of state drug control organization to achieve uniform administration of the act and policy guidance the guidance on the technical matters participation in who gmp certification scheme monitoring adverse drug reaction conducting training program for the regulatory officials and government analysis conducting and distribution of quotas of narcotics drugs for the use in a medical formulation screening of the drugs formulation available in the indian market evaluation and screening of application for granting no object certification for the export of unapproved banned drugs Now let's talk about the State Drug Standard Control Organization in the State Authority of Pharmaceuticals. These authorities are formed under the Drug and Cosmetic Act 1940, the Rule 1945. The state authorities are primarily concerned with the regulation of manufacture, sale and distribution of drugs in licensing drug testing laboratories, approving drug formulation for manufacture, carrying out pre and post licensing inspection and overseeing the manufacturing process for the drugs manufactured by respective stat units and those marketed in the state. and the responsibilities are licensing of the drug manufacturing and the sales establishments licensing of the drug testing laboratories approval of drug formulation for manufacture monitoring of quality of drugs and cosmetic manufactured by respective state units and those marketed in the state then it's also investigate and prosecute in a box contravention of legal provisions administrative actions pre and post licensing inspection recall of sub standard drugs Now let's talk about the organization. So first, DCGI is head of CDSCO, headquartered under it. Ayush and other staffs, ADC, DDC, ADC, DI, and ADI. There are six zonal offices, and it covers almost all major pharma industry. And their staff includes DDC, ADC, DI, ADI supporting staff. 
It also have seven subzonal offices. There are 13 port. Airport offices are present at different main locations in India. Laboratories like Central Drug Laboratory of Kolkata, Mumbai, and so on. Other institute also comes under laboratory like Virology, Pharmacy, UPA. Commissions, etc. All staff of laboratory co comes under the reporting of CDSCO. Now let's talk about the certificate of pharmaceutical product. The COPP certificate is issued by national health authorities depending upon the request from the customer, the authorities or the manufacturer of the product in the importing country. A COPP is in the format recommended by the WHO and it is importing country who requires the CPP for the pharmaceutical product and a special type of certificate which enables a given pharmaceutical product to be registered and marketed in exporting country for the interest and the forms part of marketing authorization application. This is issued by the inspectorate and the fabricator of the product having GMP position and also position of pharmaceutical, radiopharmaceutical, biological or a veterinary product. The approved information for the different pharmaceutical forms and trend is varied so it is always issued for the single product. Now let's talk about the aim and scope of COPP. A COPP demonstrates in the question that the imported medicine is of the appropriate standard of quality, safety and efficiency to allow marketing in the market, having undergone rigorous testing and examination to regulatory authorities in the exporting country. Also demonstrate that it follows the correct guidelines and procedure for the good manufacturing practice, increasing the level of quality and indeed safety of the product. COPP is needed when the product tends that it is intended for the registration of its renewal by the importing country with the scope that the product are distributed or commercialized in that country a certificate has been recommended so that it helps the underseas drug regulatory authorities dra or also without proper quality assurance facilities in importing countries by who and also it can assess the pharmaceutical products quality as per the prerequisite of importation or registration a copp which recommends who to the national authorities of its assurance that Confirm method is analytical by the national laboratory to view and also necessary to adapt information of the product as per labeling requirement also bioequivalence and also some stability of data. Regulatory practices are vary in the importing of countries. Now let's talk about the content of COPP. The content of COPP consists of the following main data. It's the first one is the exporting country, importing country, name, dosage form and the composition of product. Information on registration and marketing status of the product in the exporting country, number of product license and date of issue if applicable, appended summary of technical basis on the which the product has been licensed, appended current product information details on the applicant for the CPP, if marketing authorization is lacking in the exporting country information about the reasons. When applicable, information if the manufacturing site is periodically inspected by certifying authority key, and if the manufacturing site complies with the good manufacturing practice as recommended by WHO. Now let's talk about the requirements and the approval procedure for the new drugs in India. It will take around 2 to 18 months of duration. It gets start with the IND application failing to the CDSCO headquarters. Then it is examined, examined by the new drug division and in the detailed review by the IND committee. Then it get recommended to the DCGI and IND application get approved. And after approval of that particular application, the clinical trial get started. Besides that, if the application is to ethical committee, then it get reported to the ethical committee first. And if the result get positive, the clinical trial get started. After clinical trial get started, application for the new drug registration to CDSCO is reviewed by DCGI and license is get granted. Application for the new drug registration to CDSCO, if it is not complete, then it is refused to grant the license. So guys, this is about the all information. We'll come up with the same kind of information in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay tuned with our channel. Thank you.